Nazi scientists came up with the idea. Their V-1s terrorized Londoners during World War II. Cheap, quick, and easy to produce, they were the very model of German efficiency. The fact that the original cruise missile, the German V-1 flying bomb used a pulse jet, speaks volumes for the practicality of that engine, and, and nothing's changed, that's still just as practical today for use in that kind of vehicle. But Bruce says he was never about to tango with terrorists. His was technology for the free world. He travelled to the US last year to sign off a multi-million dollar deal with an undisclosed American aerospace firm. This is a Fortune 500 company, this is a big name in America. The plan was to produce X-Jets to power unmanned aerial vehicles like this for both military and civilian use. The potential, he reckons, is enormous. They can fly in areas where it may be dangerous to send a manned aircraft, or they can perform very mundane routine tasks like border patrol. The economist estimated that that market would be worth uh, $16 billion by near the end of the decade. I put a lot of time and effort, uh, hard work into forging a deal which would have been a benefit to everyone in New Zealand basically. Timbertown Tokoroa, like some kind of Kiwi heartland Cape Canaveral, you can imagine the buzz. Bruce Simpson had big plans, a factory, jobs for 20 to 30 people, a multi, multi million dollar annual turnover. It was big news when the story broke last year, though Bruce reckons the real story has gone unreported. When the news broke here, the government uh, made the silly mistake of admitting that what I was doing broke no laws, it wasn't illegal, and that I didn't pose a threat. But that's not how it was seen back in Washington. Mr. Simpson's activities have violated one and probably two international agreements. The United States and New Zealand are both members of all the international non-proliferation regimes. We have a mutual interest in preventing this kind of technology from spreading. And the U.S. can be none too subtle when it comes to removing the carrot and reaching for the stick. The United States has never been shy about sharing its concerns with friendly governments. The way Bruce Simpson figures it is that our government, having first said that his project broke no laws, but then, having received friendly advice from the U.S., decided on an inventive solution. I think what happened was when the government was looking for some way to, to shut down this particular project, they stumbled onto the fact that uh, I had a debt with the IRD, and the simplest way to put the whole project out of commission was to call in that debt all at once, even though I was paying it off in regular payments. Which is? To bankrupt me, yeah, effectively that was it. It was a convenient way for the government to uh, basically get this problem out of their hair. And for Bruce, that meant his big U.S. deal was history. One of the terms in the deal I signed was that uh, a little clause that says, if either party of this contract is deemed to be insolvent, then the co contract shall become null and void. And basically, I made that very clear to the, to the, uh, the government, that by making me bankrupt, they were effectively completely destroying the deal. Uh, it didn't seem to be of any importance to them. Bruce's accountant, Glenna Silk, is good with numbers, but has real trouble computing inland revenue on this one. He believes he's a victim of a conspiracy. Do you? I don't know, but I, I have suspicions that yes, he is correct. And what makes you suspect that? Just the way that they refused to negotiate with him, that um, it seems that he, he was pressure coming from elsewhere that, that this is what's going to happen. No matter what he said, no matter who got involved, they didn't want to listen, they just wanted him gone. Now, the IRD, as you'd probably expect, has a quite different interpretation of things. While telling us that secrecy rules prevent it discussing individual cases, it does roundly reject Bruce Simpson's allegations. And more, it says it's made repeated efforts over the years to try and help him resolve his tax situation. The idea was stupid to effectively kill the deal with the American company. The amount of money returned by that to me personally would have been uh, many times the amount of the debt. And the overall value to New Zealand would have been hundreds or even thousands of times the debt. And 
the timing of it all. Bankrupted by the IRD right after he went public about his missile. Call it a conspiracy or just an unhappy coincidence. The fact is, the Simpson family is now hard up, living on donations because Bruce is too principled to go on the benefit. When I went to the um, local electorate office of my MP, they said, um, well, you should go on the dole or collect a, um, an invalid's benefit. And I'm thinking, what is the government doing? First of all, they bankrupt me because I haven't paid my taxes, and then they're suggesting that I go and live with other taxpayers. I mean, it's completely ridiculous. Bruce is firmly of the belief that he's paying the cost of pursuing his ideas, and to him, ideas are everything. I'm an ideas guy. Um, I, I pretend to be an engineer, I pretend to be a software developer, but I only do those things because it's the necessary means to bring an idea into reality. And from my point of view, I'm happiest when I'm solving difficult problems. And now you've become a difficult problem. I guess I have been, yeah. Mr. Simpson certainly was playing with fire. What he did was not a good idea. Way down under at his ideas factory, the unhelpful Mr. Simpson is unbowed and burning it. Pedal to the metal. Success, he reckons, is just a motion away. As long as I can remember, I've been coming up with ideas and turning them into reality, commercial realities, and I'd like to continue doing that. Um, not to make myself rich, but because I get such a buzz out of achieving what, in many cases, other people have said is impossible. Well, what Bruce hasn't managed so far is a test flight of his missile. The Defence Department has refused to help point blank. After the break, 